Thank you. Um, we will start our meeting now. Anybody, anybody else that? Everybody else that? Um, discussion and action with the minutes you have in your packet. Um, I don't know if you've read them yet. Is there any comment? A motion that we approve them as written. Oh, my work is the out here in five minutes. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Oh, New business. Um, uh, we have a couple of visitors today. We have the discussion and section on Ashley J. Wing Family Memorial Park Enhancement Projects. Um, Mrs. Malik, would you like to talk to that? Yes. I believe you all have this in your um, packet. Is there an outlet down there? I'm going to go to the other end. Okay, so you can see. She's the teacher, so if you can sit up. Don't give her a bite. Except there's behind the fly, except oh, yeah, the right. Except that the teacher did not check the laptop for battery power. And so, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Janice Malick. Yes, I am related to wonderful guy, John Malick. I um, lived in town for over 40 years. And uh, shortly after we moved here, actually about 10 years, uh, in 1987, that uh, actually Wing Memorial Park was, uh, land was given to the town. And um, since then, it's had various caretakers and um, been enjoyed by many families um, all over the, from the town. And um, I always feel a picture is worth a thousand words. And I'm just going to play a slideshow for just a second. Let's see. Of uh, people visiting the, uh, <laughs> some of my grandchildren um, who we bring regularly when they come up. Um, this is a winter scene. Um, and this is the. Right now, a little bit. Um, the Ashley Wing Memorial Park is home to one of the largest pines in the state, a white pine, which is, of course, is the main state tree. Um, it was recently measured uh, by the foresters. Um, they came and, as I said, in our in the bridge, it has grown uh, quite a bit in circumference and it's grown at least a foot in height. Um, sadly, um, actually, after that, when I went down to check on it, um, going regularly um, as I prepared for uh, enhancing and uh, promoting the park, um, we went down and one of the limbs had fallen off. Now, it appears to have maybe been done during one of the storms that came through. Um, that's very recent. Uh, I can show you some pictures. This is all the before. Um, nevertheless, uh, you're going to see that families come and enjoy it. Um, when you get there, if you haven't, haven't who has been to that park before? Okay. So most of you have been. Have you been to? Well, okay. to the parking lot, but I've been down to the. Okay. Yeah, so if, I would invite you to go down just the same and take a look. It's about a mile, 1.8 miles from the end of the Martin Stream Road. And on the left, um, you'll, find, you'll find the big parking lot there. Um, and as you know, uh, there is now a um, the rail trail coming behind the park. Um, the parking lot abuts it on one side, as the information said, and the rail trail on the back. When that happened, I was concerned that the area be protected from motorized vehicles going down, um, as were some other people. And um, because it's a very wide path that when you when you get there, an opening that you could drive either on a snowmobile or uh, ATV or bikes, uh, motorbikes through. So um, uh, the proposal is some things to protect it. Um, last year, the TIF committee already did um, make some approval for putting in the parking lot and um, putting in the rail trail. And in that proposal, um, you may not have a copy of it, but there was a copy um, that's, and it says, you know, they want one of the goals uh, is to protect that area, as is one of the goals with the deed to the property. Um, also says it should be protected for future uh, enjoyment of the community. 
um, the way it's going to um, uh, enhance the community is that it hopefully will be better presented. It will, with this new proposal, it'll be protected um, and it, um, environmental, be good environmental stewardship on the community's part. I think it will give, uh, promote the image of the community as caring about um, the pr preservation of uh, natural attractions and especially on this particular, this tree. Um, there are other trees there that are, are not as uh, dynamically big, but are also equally big. And this tree apparently survived fires in the 1700s, huge forest fires that came through this area. And um, it's, a, it's a, a token to the sturdiness of Norwich Walk people um, and to come through, you know, many uh, different disasters and different difficulties. And um, so I hope that this proposal um, will bring more people there and help them enjoy it in a better way. And this is one of the other trees right there. Oh, let's see. This far. On the cover of your proposal, you will notice that um, that is a picture of the tree um, as it stood this winter. Um, uh, trees provide a lot to the to a community. How many of you have trees in your yards? <laughs> How many have trees surrounding your house? Um, we often live in, you know, forested areas here, um, and we know that trees enhance our communities and bring people together. Um, they can be unifying, they um, effortlessly pull pollutants from the air and clean our air, and they can be noble, as this particular area is, and some noble trees. Um, if you look at their proposal, It is a fairly small pot. Uh, it's 5.85 parcel of land. It might be smaller now because part, the part of the parking lot probably went onto that land, but I'm not sure about that. Um, it's on the Martin Street Road. Um, as I said, the tree has grown quite a bit. Uh, as the state is presently uh, putting in the rail trail, um, it is in need of uh, protection from um, people that go down into the, that area. Um, the improvements that uh, are being proposed, and you can try to over your page. Um, proposing to do it in phases, um, just because things are going to take time. Um, so phase one would be to protect the park from damage from motorized vehicles and from also from bikes, because I have seen like just pedaling like dirt bikes. I've seen some, already seen some damage down there from that. Um, that the way to do this would be to uh, place some natural barriers. And I've talked to um, the town and about placing granite blocks that were actually already, we already own, which are up by the um, public works. And they're from the bridge that was taken out. Um, so they were bridge abutment pieces, um, quite nice looking. Um, and put up some signs by the trail. We have already put up a temporary sign that says no motorized vehicles and just sort of put it in the middle of the trail. Because at first, the Pleasant Rail Trail was going to be opening by the summer. And so I'm a little concerned that it might get ATVs going down there, but um, it's not going to happen yet. Um, yeah, another goal was to increase the safety and accessibility. So um, there are stairs there. Um, I did have the Nickersons come and look at them, and they are very sturdy, but the railings need to be replaced, and they're going to put things on the treads to keep them from being so slippery. Um, so there'll be additional uh, railings and a non skid surface. Um, I was talking with the foresters about how to keep people from going straight down. But if you go there, you know that the path is about this wide. And you don't want a direct path down the hill because of the erosion and um, it will damage the soil. It's, it's a, called a riparian uh, habitat, which is uh, any area that's next to a river is a riparian habitat. And as we know, it flooded and it floods periodically. Um, so it's very wet and it's also um, very mossy and a lot of debris um, with, that you want there it holds the soil, in, but a lot of foot traffic will just erode it. So in order to um, prevent that, 
Um, I propose if you put in a little overlook, it would be level with the ground, just a, a short ramp up to it, not steps. That way it would be accessible to everybody. Um, if someone went, was in a wheelchair or walker, they could actually get down to that point and look out over the little, has like a little valley. Give them a band there, kind of get to a high spot and then it goes down to a little valley. Um, so that would be a little upland viewing area. Um, that would uh, have a railing, it would probably be 10 feet by six feet, it would be wooden, um, and it would be made with uh, pressure treated wood. Thank you. Pressure treated wood, and it would be, and then it would be stained a natural, uh, like a brown color. So it would blend in. The idea is to keep it a more natural looking environment down there, um, even though it's going to be enhanced. That would be a place for people to go up on that little overlook, would have a railing that would prevent people from going down, and would also have a bench for people who prefer to sit and just enjoy that quiet space. Um, and you can also use the stairs to go down. Um, now, visitor awareness would be another goal. Uh, so we need some signs and arrows to the stairs and where the, uh, the, uh, the trail is. Then it would be a walking trail only. I have looked up some information on that. And look at the ones you see in campgrounds that are brown and it has the hiker and it says trail. This one would say walking trail only. Um, it's a positive way to state that it is for foot traffic and not for other kinds of traffic. <laughs> and some signs would say how to respect the property. I don't know if you put this one in here. Give them the picture about the home of the pines. Um, well, one of the suggestions is to make a sign underneath the current sign that says Every Day we Memorial Park. I have one copy. Um, and it would say Home of the Big Pines or Big Pine. What's it say, Big Pine? But since one has sort of finding its, it's a next stage in the circle of life. You might say big pines, or it could say home of the Norwich Walk Pines underneath the current sign. So, so here's a picture of the stairway that needs to be repaired, and that will be repaired. Um, but that that would be um, so. Some people have said to me, "Where is it?" I've been up there. I couldn't find it. Even the foresters that came said that they didn't know this where it went. They drove past it. So um, in this way, it would be uh, noticeable to people right away. That would be the things that I would hope would be done possibly this fall. Uh, everything could be done by then. Um, phase two would be to enhance visitor knowledge and the safety. So we need an interpretive sign that would be down by the little platform with an overlook set inside a little bit that would prevent vandalism uh, more so than if it's out by the parking lot. And we just say this, you know, a little history like I told you about the park, but why the tree is there, how big it is, um, how it survived a fire, and then give some information on the uh, riparian area. Um, trail improvements, when we talk about spreading something to enhance the trail, um, that is still being explored because it does flood. So anything you put there can be washed away. And in fact, one of these pictures, you saw children playing on a bridge that actually was about 20 feet up the stream until it flooded and then it moved it, picked it up and moved it down the stream. So we need to put things that can't, that you, they do get washed away. It could be like bark that can be uh, absorbed back into the environment. Um, mm -hmm. The possibility would be also to build a boardwalk or a raised boardwalk around the root area of the tree. That's still being explored. Um, and the last phase would be involving the community more, um, so that's the community folks that would have ownership. Um, I would hope that uh, community organizations, um, such as um, maybe Scouts or 4 H, if there's still 4 H here, um, but I was uh, also like to uh, approach the school and get a teacher there, perhaps a third grade teacher, where they study the community, they already go to the history house, the fire station and the town office, that this would be a place they could bring their class to learn about their own environment right here, the important area, but small in their community and increase their community pride. Um, and um, 
Uh, also, there are other big pines, but there are no trails presently to them. You can get over to them and you can see the people have walked to them. And that might be something we could do in the future to the other, there's a set of other two big pines. Um, and that could be something that could be done in the future, maybe next year. Are there any questions? Um, the 5.85 parcels, is there any markings now, like the outline of what the parcel is? We have a map. Yes, and it's been there for eight months. But it's not, is it like marked so that people would know that, like, okay, I'm going off of the park or anything no. like that? No. Okay. There is a stream. So, so when you're looking at the pond to the left, there's a stream that wanders through that will cross the rail trail, across the, well, the rail trail crosses over that stream. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the, the rail trail is the end point of the. Here's a map if you'd like to see it. Yeah, I think that would be. Which is the same map that we've seen as a picture? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, and then red is where the park is. Right. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. So are you looking so, for funding for just phase one or the whole thing or what? I I would actually for funding for the whole thing to begin with. Uh, I think it would be about um total estimated cost. Yeah, is um yeah, six thousand nine hundred. Yep. Um there was a little bit of wiggle room. Um we don't know how much really some of the interpretive signing or eventually boardwalk. Um um, my cost, but that should cover all the improvements and enhancements to that area and the protection to that area. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we do this. Mm -hmm. I think that if we don't do it, do it right and do it well, that we've, that we haven't done justice to, to the resource that we have. And to all the arguments that we made when we said we want to put a parking right in and we want to preserve, protect, defend large mm -hmm. trees. So, my question mm -hmm. Are you sure 6,900 is enough? Uh, it, it may not be, but I'm, I'm a conservative um, person. And I think that, um, you know, in the future, if it felt, if it seemed like we could use more. I don't think the only thing I can think of would be more barriers uh, because the access to the rail trail from the parking area goes right adjacent to the rail trail. But that's all very well treated, um, very filled in with undergrowth. I don't think that people would even attempt to go down there, but I'm not sure. You could put, you know, there's a possibility that that could be marked off somehow so people would know that that was the barrier um, in a sort of natural way. Speaking of the barriers, so the town already owns the barriers, but we pay for the barriers. A lot of them we do. So there's a price for them. So if we already, I think that's to move them. Just to move them. them. Okay. Yeah, so so um, it's $150 an hour. I think I even think we can for the person to move them. And they you pick them up and then bring them over and place them where we would want them. Okay. That's a very interesting story because this is the old bridge, the four right. bridge that we have. This is, and the pieces are extremely unique and uh, they have a history of their own. Um, some of it is probably dawdling for it, which came from Norwich Water. And we were hoping in the future to also have another um, kiosk or, or a, an explanation of this granite being from. Uh, that's another possible. I agree. Apologize. I think, like she said, Barney, he said, like, the, it looks like the area is something that you definitely could like, use from the park in time. So, which, which begs the question you sure that you're asking for enough money? <laughs> because there are all kinds of great ideas, and I love John's idea. If you got granted, whether or not it was from Dawson, like, which would be even better, but even, even so, if it's it's repurposed once for a bridge and another tech, you know, and, and it ends up down there. If you don't put a sign up for that, I don't think you're doing the park justice. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. But we could put yeah, those are ideas, and I would hope that. So you're on money. Actually, <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to estimate from what I look at online, and I've talked to Richard about this, um, 
but the signs, interpretive signs that I've seen are and to have the main and their installment, I'm gonna say it's gonna be at least five hundred to a thousand dollars a sign. Easy. Easy. So I only did enough for one interpretive sign so far. And that was to talk about the riparian area of the tree. And you know, it's possible we could put a small kiosk up. Honestly, I think you don't want to promote it too much in a way that it gets so much traffic that it I don't know, destroys the habitat. So you kind of have a little balance, you know. So maybe a small kiosk, a wooden kiosk with a great glass, and then we could put a map eventually of the area. And we have, like you saw there, that kind of a map with a little trail. But right now, the trails are not even. Really. Um, you can see them, but they kind of go every which way. And we're going to try to direct that traffic a little bit more. I think that's a great idea to go to school. Let people know and know where it is and get them there. Because then the kids are there and then they tell their parents. Well, I was a third grade teacher in Bloomfield, and um, we brought our students over here in third grade and learned all about that tree. There's a lot of cool things you can do and how many arms can go around it, um, you know. A lot of things you can do and look at the environment and like I said, just community pride um, and something special you have. And he had mentioned about wondering if it's enough money to get mentioned a bench or I don't think that's on here either. So the bench was included in the estimate for the um for the old right. yeah. and, and the, the railings and the, that was all one yeah. estimate. Okay. I have it if you like. I think it might be on attached to your sheet too. Well, I'll have a hedge, and that is that she's been on three phases of phase one. How's that? I mean, phase A has these three phases that she's described. But we've talked about the historic panels, similar to like what you've seen in the Grandy area on the other side of the bridge. We've talked about the bridge history and so many history. So we've got history of that topic, the rail. Uh, you can have a, one of our graduation agreements on the board. You could have its own panel that would have so much on it. And it ran right across that property. Those are the things we've talked about that will, will require more money than what she's asking for for all of this. In terms of design, print, install. Yeah. And then we've talked about flora fauna identifications and how that could be a unique tool in that area as well. And how do you do that responsibly? So it's a multi multi phase project. And I think that this does your access and protection out of the gate. And then your super enhancements can come in. Yes, so that's what I think. I might come back again to you then for phase three. Well, that's good. Right. For phase two, of it, I guess you could say. So my head is, Janice, yes. is do we give Janice some latitude and some extra money for an extra sign or two um, now, or do we, you know, leave you with an open invitation to come back? I guess either one is okay. What's the feeling of the group? I'm just curious, has surveillance have surveillance cameras? I sorry I got here late. Mm -hmm. I was sidetracked, but um have surveillance cameras down there been approved? Any of that yet? Not that I'm no. because I'm just thinking of vandalism. Um, it's interesting you bring that up because I've been going down uh, regularly uh -huh. from you can see from the videos, and um there's been very little. Uh, damage, but there's been activity because I find trash. So I know people have been out there and they visit it, but they're leaving some trash. Not overwhelming. Um, I did see a couple of little trees chopped um, with an axe. That was very recently, that, and that's since the parking lot area has been put in. And I think that's where they're putting up signs in respect. Uh, uh, respect. And um, the way I found out about the limb that came down was I went down on a Wednesday. And then I met with some people on Monday to give me an estimate, and the limb was gone, had fallen. So in that length of time, I mean, the person that came to meet me also said he goes there every week and goes down and picks up trash. They live nearby, and they brings his family and had his daughter with him. So, so, can not, not, this, not at this point. If, if you want to pray, really encourage carry and carry out in these situations. I don't feel like the okay. parking lot. I was going to say, yes. I think so. There, if it's an hard right now, that be something that I think that might be something to put over. We haven't talked about that. Mm -hmm. There'll probably be some there eventually. You always heard of carry and carry out. And yeah. the problem with that property is that it's close enough to a town line. You have to pay to dispose of trash, uh -huh. then it will end up. 
topics being a dump truck yeah. every yeah. week. So if you if surveillance is installed on the line, I think that's something we can seriously look at where yeah. you can grab a plate and draw the truck and just dump the mattress. <laughs> um, one last thing um, in is motion of this part. There are very few things in our our life and our world that inspire awe. That tree, if you go down and look at it, inspires your respect of our planet, but more what can happen over hundreds of years. It, it's, it takes your breath away. And when the limb fell, it was tragic, but the limb itself is, is just, I mean, I bet you it's four feet across. The limb, the limb, not, not the tree. The tree's about six or eight feet. But it's, it takes your breath away to look at it. The work crew came down, so we'll go look at it, look at it, see if we, what we can we can move it. And I said, no. "We're going to move that." <laughs> and it's like as tall; oh, it's, it's about as tall as this, and about that big around. But um, the people that came also said, "You know, this is going to be an attraction. Just to be able to touch that yeah. and climb on it. Kids are going to like that." So it'll be cleaned up around it, you know, the little limbs and the things that knocked over and whatnot. But there's no way you can move it. No. And it's down and it's and it went to the ground about it fell so hard, it went to the ground probably a foot and a half at least. Um, so it's staying oh, it's, it's, it's off. It's off. It's down the road. I mean, I support the project, but you couldn't figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to do it right and, mm -hmm. uh, and do a good job, professional looking, you know, mm -hmm. nice looking. How much money we put into this thing, then the tree that is going to fall down. Yes, it, yeah. it is going to fall down. Yeah. The question of when. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. I put a lot of thought into that after seeing that. I was stunned, of course, to see we can ask Richard because I sent him a text. I can't believe it. Uh, it. My thoughts are that there are at least four or five other trees there that also survived this fire, but they're, they're not as old. Um, this one, the ones that whose limb fell was probably 250 to 300 years old, and the foresters said they couldn't um, measure it because it's too big. They have a forer that they can put in, but the tree is so big, the core wouldn't have gone any far enough. Um, and I think that it's still a lesson in um, how environments change over time. And, and so I think it still would be an important place to preserve. A hundred years And also that. respectful yeah. to the people that donated their land. That's important. Well, and 100 years from now, one of those smaller trees might be the tree. Might be the big tree, yes. Think about that. I think there's still God, even if, even if that tree did fall, just like this limb, right? Just to see, I mean, you know, the trees are going to be there for right. 50, 100 years. Right, you know, so it's all better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How, oh, <laughs> what kind of condition is the tree in? Has anybody... Evaluated that to see if there's Not since part that, trails the in it. Saying, they thought it probably. They said it probably has some rot inside because of its age, um, and that when you go down to look, you can see where the limb fell, and um, there's pictures. It's and it was rotten on part of it, but the rest of it looks healthy. Yeah. So um, who knows? It might stand another fifty years. Another. 75 to 100 years, but it's leaning, and I was already leaning, and the um, forester said that it had created strong roots, which are called buttress roots, and that's why its roots are so voluminous, I mean, even now they're huge, and that will hold it. And then at one point, before I hit my lightning, because I kind of see a crack, someone said, did the tree crack? Well, yes, about 100 years ago. But the roots have accommodated to it, so it won't fall. So um, I, I'm thinking that if you look at the rest of it, it's looking not bad. And I'm gonna, I would like to ask a forester or an arborist to take a look at it. And is there something that can be done to, you know, 
preserve it a little bit. But more. even in your phase three, like if you develop the trails to the other part of it and use the yeah. five acres, that would be worth it. Yes, that's what I was thinking. They develop the rest of the mm -hmm. We're going to also have to remember it. The more we're hoping that there'll be a lot of traffic in that park. That's the objective to building the parking lot to feed the rail trails. When people get there and they're going to see a sign, the big tree, they're going to look at the big tree. Yeah. Whereas before, no one would go to the big tree because it's on, excuse me, it's in an area of town that most people don't go to. Because so all I have to say is there's going to be a lot of people there, and I think it will enhance. Scout North's coming, Norwich walks, um, economic um, vitality, vi vi um, vitality to have something like that. Because I'm going to say, oh man, look at the North walk and went snowmobile, and then we saw this tree. You know, now I want to go back to see the tree. You know, so you know, it, it's uh, I think it's a economic. I can also give it some credence to say an economic part of our economic. Yeah, I don't think there's any question of something like that. Yeah. So I would I would make a motion that we would approve um, the improvements to Ashley between Park, specifically the area of the trees and as presented by Janice. Um, and an amount up to seventy five hundred dollars and invite her back <laughs> if that's not enough. Sorry. Any discussion? Thank you. Well, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you. And big three. Thanks. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, JP, it's uh, we're very fortunate to have something like that. Um, now we're looking forward to trail maintenance building proposal by Carrie Everett. The trail was $7,500. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the second. <laughs> so we provided you with a packet too. Um, there's some budgetary pricing there, but basically, um, the Northern Portland Association, we have a rumor shed right now. It's out on the Frederick's Corner Road. Um, it's a little tiny, it's tiny, like probably the size of this room building. Um, that houses our snowmobile groomers and like our gator and chainsaws, that kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, and we have that land, but unfortunately, a big groomer to groom the rail won't fit um, across our trails or across the mill stream to get to the rail deck um, because we would have to cross the mill stream to get there. So we have to trailer that um, to the rail bed, which it will go up on the park and ride um, in that area. Um, these are the most accessible. Um, so what we're asking for is a building. We're asking the TIF committee to think about a building um, or build a building, I should say, not think about. Um, it's a 30 by 50 steel building. Um, it would have two 10 by or three 10 by 10 garage doors, one being a full through and one um, being just a drive in for like regular vehicles. Um, does everybody know what a groomer looks like with a groomer attached to it? Like it's a big tractor and it's got this giant groomer. Probably some of you know more about it than I do. Uh, <laughs> I don't drive it, but um, we have to park it on the rail bed. Part of the club's responsibility is grooming the rail bed for everybody, walkers, uh, bikers, snowmobilers, whatever. Um, and they want us basically to groom the rail bed basically every day, if not every other day. Um, so obviously we need to leave our groomer over there and somebody has got to get up in the middle of it. We groom at night usually because of traffic and you can see people with the lights because the groomer doesn't turn around easily. Um, and we've got to park on the rail bed. So we're hoping to fund a building that will allow us to park our groomer there in the winter, um, allow us to bring community in and hold community events there or bring people in and hold club events there, share it with the town, share it with the highway department, with whatever um, we need to share with to spread calcium on the rail bed or park an ATV there or whatever needs to happen. Um, so that is basically what we're looking to do. I think you have a copy of like a, what it would look like 
Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to read this out loud because that's just weird, but. Um, no, it will. Well, so what we have priced is insulation currently is to have it all insulated. We would in the future look to add monitor heaters, maybe um, funded by the club or in partnership with the town. It would also house our security system, hopefully for the town. Um, that's all. The security system security. for that club, which then in turn provides security for the tree as well. Um, it would be there's quarter bodies up there, so uh, or there will be. So obviously we we'll want something for security system up there anyway. But um, right now, well, who will own the building? The town. The town will own the building, mm -hmm. and it's my understanding that the club will lease the building. Or how's that relationship? Well, we don't have a relationship currently. Uh, when it comes to that, it's on town it is on town property. Well, it would be a TIF funded building. So, I mean, for us, we don't have a ton of revenue, or like a huge revenue stream. It's all based on whatever volunteer hours we can put in the state reimburses us for those hours that we volunteer. Right, yeah. So, um, and you said it's going in that parking lot? It, not in the parking lot. There's a spot off to the right, if you're in the parking lot, off to the right-hand side, that is, um, there's plenty of clear space for it. Um, and this would allow the, so the way the rail is going to be operated right now for grooming is Fairfield is actually going to groom from Oakland all the way to our park and ride and turn around and go back because you have to have a space to turn around. You can't just stop at your town line and, mm -hmm. and head back. So, and then we will groom from the groomer shed or from the park and ride all the way to Madison Mill, turn around and come back. Um, so this drive through building allows us to pull into the building and just pull right back out and head back out onto the trail. It keeps the groomer dry, obviously. So if there's a breakdown, we can fix it easily. Or our groomer guys aren't like, dusting off a foot of snow and trying to start it in the freezing cold. So Richard, do you want to add anything here? Um, I mean, I can throw a couple of things in, I guess. One is the, the maintenance plan that you just described in terms of where we're going to be grooming. We know that North Rock is going to have a major role on that because of the cooperative agreements that we have between the club, the town, and the state. We received an email to that effect the other day. So that's up in the air. I think what she's got for maybe distance, it may shift in terms of where you are on the trail. Um, and it won't go, I don't think it will be left from the Fox responsibility on that front just because of the reliability and the volunteer commitment that we have to the bottom. Um, from the get go on the actual car proposals, we have talked about the multi phase. And one of the things was a building on site. The size of the building or whatnot was always something for consideration. Um, for the town's community, a purpose, a small building works. So all we want is electricity to drop in and surveillance. But when we start talking about the cooperation and a huge unmet need of a nonprofit um, in terms of being able to have a piece of equipment, how much do you pay for the government? This room, we only paid, we paid $12,000 for. But that was club dollars. That was club dollars, 100% club dollars. Um, it's, it, to me, it was a big price tag. That's why I got you the year revenues and expense sheet as to where the fund stands. Um, but I don't want to sell the project, but I don't want to not sell it on the project. And that is that I think that without some extent of support from the tip this project doesn't happen and this is one of the keys to the economic development um that we wouldn't have otherwise you've got the ability to control this rail through your town um and, and how do you do that the best and i think that it's a strong partnership with the nonprofit um that's willing to do that with us um, so, yeah I'm just, are you, I'm right. not interrupting you. Am I? Okay. I'm just curious where it would be on this map of the wing, actually wing car. Okay. 
it would be like right to the side here. It's on the right hand side. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. And how large is the actual vehicle? The actual size of it? Um, it is probably 30 feet with plow. Right, it's a, a drag itself is uh, 10 with a hitch is probably 12, and then probably another 12 for the groomer and then for the machine, and then a plow. So we have to open up roadways um, so the machine has to have a plow on the front. Right. Um, it will fit across the rail bridge, the machine that we have. Um, so in it, so it's about it's eight and a half feet wide, I think, or nine feet wide. Um, so it will go over the mill. It will. Oh. Well, no, it will go over the mill stream. It'll go over the river. It'll go over the well, bridge. It's going to fit across the bridge, but it's too heavy. It's too heavy to go across the road the mill stream. Oh, oh the okay. mill stream is just from. Okay, the, okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. Now, and it's single lane mill stream, single lane snowmobiles. So okay. there's like you couldn't get. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. I was just talking about. Literally a snow snowmobile trail groomer. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. talking about it. The, the town and the club, as far as I know, neither of us have anything to maintain the gravel. Not yet, right? right. The yeah. club is looking into a tractor, raw rate, stuff like that. We have right. our, yeah, our ATV grant has some money in it for um, a calcium spreader, but that's a state grant um, that we're looking at to. Will that pay it for it in full? Oh, uh, we offset it with volunteer hours. Um, we volunteer. I mean, I think this past weekend we had a total of ten people, and everybody volunteered four hours on their Sunday morning. So that's it's basically you know like forty hours every week that we volunteer every Sunday morning to like do all kinds of stuff. This next weekend is picking rail out of the rail bed, like rock raking it, and people literally walking behind picking up. Stuff that popped uh, up. So, what it, how big is the building you have right now? You said a 30 by 50. Will we have an That's what you have right now. We, oh, no, we have yeah. oh, like a 12 by. Yeah. 20 by 20. Maybe it's a 20 by 20. Probably 20 by 20 is what they have right now. That's it's okay. Small. And if you <laughs> get this, what are you going to do with that building? We'll keep it um, because we also have um, like 25 miles of trail on this side of the mill stream and places that a big groomer won't go, like lots of landowners that we have to take snowmobiles on. Um, so we'll keep all of our snowmobiles and that sort of stuff on that side of the river, maybe bring one snowmobile to this side of the mill stream. Um, but we can access almost all the time, both sides with the with a snowmobile, so. And Richard, I, uh, looking back on our uh, facade program and what, uh, if this, if the town owns this building, I thought we couldn't use tip funds on town-owned buildings. So we're not this is the facade program, right? And we did build a fire station with tip funding, right? So it's the economic development aspect of it. Okay. We authorize the funds to put a new structure in the Park. Okay. Things like that. So. But that's okay. Yeah, where okay. it's a town-owned piece of property. The I don't think there's any issue to come with use of tip funds for it. I mean, you could you could argue even on the development all day. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we have we have an obligation as a town to do everything that we can do financially, morally, etc., to keep the trail in good shape. Uh, otherwise. Why bother? Okay. So we've received a, a grant of 70000 or so to build a park and ride. We put 90000 90, 90, Yeah, okay. And we put some extra money in about one, I believe. And we just talked about the Ashley Green Park thing. If, if it isn't done and done right, then, then why bother? So if we have an obligation. So I'm all in favor of a a town-owned building on a town-owned piece of property in support of maintenance of the railroad. No problem. I'm on that, 100. My issue, if I have one, I'm still noodling it, is 
to what extent does this become the Sportsman's Association clubhouse hangout spot? <laughs> That, that's what my issue is. <laughs> no, I, I understood. Um, and I think we've had a lot of discussion around that. We're keeping, I think that's part of the reason that everybody was very interested in keeping our clubhouse. Not that we hang out there either, because it's not much of a clubhouse area. Like it's pretty small, it's packed with stuff. Um, I think we would like, we have talked, um, I know I've mentioned it to Richard about having like a club barbecue, that kind of stuff out in front of that building because of its location to the trail and um, to the parking lot. Fundraiser. Fundraiser, that kind of stuff. Which, um, which, which trail rider going through is going to throw you a couple bucks if you have well, to right. and everything. Absolutely. Um, and I think even like the for the Pines as well, I mean, it really does that park area gives us a lot of opportunity to ask people who aren't from here to support our community and support a park and ride that hopefully in the future has cameras. I mean, that's a big deal. People park in Newport and it's a big deal. They lose stuff, expensive things out of their vehicle. Um, and I think having um, a secure area with lighting, hopefully, and that kind of stuff in the future is uh, important to full programs, uh, first and mine. Um, but yeah, I mean, we the stipulate whatever stipulations need to happen. Really, the majority of the time that we're going to be using that shed at all is going to be winter. Um, there's very little trail maintenance that is required of us as an ATV club, besides um, some rock raking, possibly maybe some grading. But we, we're going to hire out all of that stuff. Nobody in our club does that. Um, I think rock raking, we are going to end up doing this weekend on our own with our own personal and private tractors, private tractors and private um, rock rakes. Um, but I guess I, I guess other than it isn't something that we intend to do to hang out there and we don't really hang out. Well, our meeting, meetings are at the fire station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, like everybody in the club have access so to the so building. So so like yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Ideally, only a couple people would have a key. I mean, the tractor that we're going to room with, there's only a couple people that can even drive it in our club currently. One, actually. I'm pretty sure David Over is the only one that can uh, can currently drive our tractor. Um, and so without training, we wouldn't have anybody else. Um, David is the trail master. So he would kind of be in charge of manning that key anyway, and then maybe one other club member, yeah. um, just to make sure that we can gain access to it. I, I want to be clear, I support the partnership. I, mean, I don't think 100% town funds is the way we're going to get the trail maintained. Right. It's not going to work by by going to the select meeting, going to the town manager and asking for town employees to maintain the trail. That's probably going to be a problem. It is going to be a problem. But that's probably a problem. So, a good partnership is the right way to maintain that treasure. And, and I would want to be supportive to our partner and logical partner is a sportsman association. Mm -hmm. And building a town owned building on town owned property, no big deal, right? My my issue come, comes in with the, the hangout club. We this is our property aspect mm -hmm. that could happen, especially over time. We wouldn't go out to um, Frederick's Corner Road as a town and build a clubhouse with a sports association, right? So right. why would we be there? Right. So that's mm -hmm. that's where my only hangout is. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to support the trail. We absolutely do. I'm the one now. So A, we have spent public funds, maybe not tip funds, but we have spent public funds on arguably clubhouses. Um, that weren't built for the purpose, that purpose, but yeah, yeah, ahead. but also that aren't subject to the same membership requirements. These folks cannot discriminate. If you want to be a member of the organization, they have to let you in. They don't have people knocking their doors down. Um, and so I think that's really important. And maybe the perception of the club is different than the perception of administration. But I think when you talk about the dollar year lease or something like that, it's not going to be really about the lease of the building. It's going to be about the value of being able to store your equipment in the town not forfeiting its right to access that building. Because if we put surveillance equipment in there, it'll be just like any other town facility. Mm -hmm. We might give you access to the firehouse, 
but you're going to come in, you're going to put your background check, and we're going to make sure. And also, it's going to be covered with security camera, ideally. When, I would be a disappointment to see the building moving without that surveillance. Um, so ideally, the town would have the key as well as oh, the right the force. And, yeah. and the number of people that would be used, that the club would use it for, would be very limited. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a, a pretty tight system of controls. If an organization wants to use the fire station now, right, mm -hmm. or, the, or the town office, right, well, would it, it would be the same, wouldn't it? To an extent, but the lease with them would give them those rights to I mean, a piece of equipment. I'm not going to move it out. Sorry for the historical society or something to me, but that doesn't make sense. I think, like she said, though, like think, using it for fundraising activity or something is just like that would make sense because, like you said, if you're driving a trailer, you're going to. You go to the school park and you can use that there without any okay from mm -hmm. sure. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have any obligations the other time, the other three seasons of the year on the rail trail? Uh, it's what the town, the state, and the Sportsman's Association agreed to shoulder jointly. So the town is about grading it ourselves, taking the town grader, putting a town person in there and going. You could argue it was a revenue generator. I would argue it was break even, and we were just helpful. Um, and then the decision was made to pay that to Ron's grading, and Ron's grading came in, did it, and they just sent us a portion of the bill. I paid the bill. We're going to file with the state for reimbursement, and the Sports Association has to balance the grant credit, so the town is fully whole. How many miles of trail is Norwich Walk responsible for? How many miles oh, is how many miles is that? Oh, Eleven. Eleven. So we're not responsible for anything. It's this oh. maintenance responsibility doesn't start and stop at ten miles. It's possible that they'll ask us to go and put calcium down between Oakland and Mass. And the goal through that grant for an ATV program is that the guy that's in that piece of equipment is volunteering, and that's going to be the local share of that expense. Uh -huh. It's 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 really a super region kind of a thing. It's a matter of what value, what control does North want to have over its own destination? And the state, the I sent an email, I think, Carrie, the other day. The state is very pleased with the proactive role that the public town has been taking in terms of trying to control it and understand its value to the local economy. What effect will all that traffic have on the main attraction, the trees? Well, that's why she's here tonight. That's right. why she went up early. And I think. When we polled at the start of the meeting, how many people had been to that tree? Half of the people in the room didn't raise their hand. Well, I would have raised my right. hand. Okay, so and I think that that's, I've got to pay for my office one of the first days I came to work here. And the woman gave it to me and she said, I don't want it back until you get it looking something like that. And uh, so it's been on my board ever since. But okay. I think that as much as you don't want traffic, you do want traffic. We gotta have more than zero. Well, I, I understand oh. the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I think people it's weird, but people will take their snowmobiles to go see the weirdest thing. Oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> and I don't carry it out that big tree, but now that that big branch fell, it gives you a lot. You want to see the branch? <laughs> it gives you a lot more perspective as to how big that tree yeah. is, just by having that down next to you. Yeah. So I get it. Both sides of it, and I, you know, this building I don't think is about driving traffic in and around the tree. It's about maintaining the rental. Would I say anything? Just say this is my first one about how much we give out, or is there no limit on how much we give? Like I saw something about. Can you speak yeah. louder? I'm sorry. I, I can't. It's my first one. I just asked about limits on what we approve. Oh. So the facade improvement program, which is a big chunk of what you will deal with here, this is an unusual language of two projects, <laughs> is private business okay. that is coming in and looking for help in improving the exterior of the building. Okay. That is a $50,000 project that total of okay. 25000 reimbursement. Okay. Other than that, if you don't money into the town, you don't want to walk. <laughs> was, was I that? didn't realize that the 50% was approved. What? Oh, well, you said if it's a fifty thousand dollar project, we project, can approve up to fifty. We would, when was that approved? Always, always. We talk about fifty percent. Facade improved. Yeah, first like facade. Facade. Okay, I'm. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it was less. 
a percent, a smaller percentage of the total. No, no, oh, but, total, yes. Yeah. But the, the community time and time again has set that total aside. Well, there was a caterer that kept saying, you know, <laughs> you just set the threshold and you move it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then this is what's in our time for that week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's you know. You want to take public comment? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Woman in yellow. So I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, one was uh, you said just it'll be is, is placement. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so is your proposal to place it right now? There's a structure out there that will house the pool box. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be on over on that side? Is yeah. it going to be a long way? Mm -hmm. Okay. And will there be enough space? You said you want to be able to drive through. I assume assuming to drive through from the long, the long mm -hmm. way, not the mm -hmm. what size is it going to be? 30 by 50. And why 30 by 50? Because that sounds, I mean, it just sounds big. Mm -hmm. I did, you know, why 30 by 50? If it's going to house the the tractor with the um, grader and I think because they also need to put in correct like an ATV in it, a snowmobile in it. Like it's more than just the groomer, from what I understood. Ideally, a pickup truck, um, like in the summer. Um, ideally, ideally, we could leave the groomer and everything over there and not pay to truck it. I mean, it does cost us like a couple hundred dollars to truck it across town, which sounds silly, but it does. Um, Get storage materials. Yeah. yeah, right. Calcium storage, and then having a truck in there that's got the calcium tank in the back, or um, the calcium spreader. Uh, we have a gator that we probably would want on that side of the river. We have two gators, one for each side of the river. So, so how is more than just the yeah. yes, depending on the season. Um, and is the interior design just open right now? It's just open. Mm -hmm. So that would accommodate however you want it to be. So you can put the truck in. You can put the uh, room on one side, you can put other other materials or your gators on one area. Yeah, so right now, um, almost in the middle, um, it favors the left hand side of the building. It's a 10 foot bay that passes through okay. a 10 foot garage door on one side and a 10 foot garage door on the other. And then to the right of that is a 10 by 10 that just enters the building, it doesn't have like a drive through, so to speak. Um, ideally, we would put a control room for the security system stuff. Um, an area where the town would keep things that are not privy to the, you know, club, that they can keep their things that were not supposed to have, whatever private things stuff for. Um, what materials is it going to be built from? It will be like a little it's a steel build, a steel build, yeah, and a concrete slab. Yep, um, and it's green on green. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know. I know it's yeah, aesthetically um, that would look more appealing to say mm -hmm. uh, gray steel gray right. building, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, well, and we really went with something that was a little prettier than like a quantum building, you know, like a round steel building or something. Mm -hmm. um, this one is like pretty nice. Oh, on, so the like shot on the um, gravel that's already there, mm -hmm. or is it going to be to the right of that gravel? To the right of that gravel. Is that kind of behind? Kind of behind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's a there's part of them, like they went in and moved a set of pines, uh, and they went and put it underneath all the pines behind where the foot of pines are. Yeah. Yes, essentially somewhere in that area. That, yeah. So you have to take down more of those trees. We're I hoping that's not enough to. No, sure. Matt. That's my map. Thank you. No, it's not. I mean, when are you hoping that you were able to build the building? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. No, this one's rude, but it's a availability, right? I have no idea if you'd be able to get someone for concrete this season. Uh, did you did you learn a big with this? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> with the concrete, is that this is about in this estimate, mm -hmm. or this is just about so you already got an estimate from someone for concrete? Well, yeah, we know. Well, we got an estimate for something else. Um, so we have that estimate for that concrete. Um, we think 137.5 is going to be pretty high. Uh, but when I quoted the steel building, they literally said you have a day because uh, steel prices are insane. So they're all over the place. Um, we have obviously wiggle room. We can make decisions on the fly, kind of. We haven't worked at the building. The building won't be here until November. 
So at this and rate, it, it, we'll put it up. The this labor to no, the labor to put it up is is uh, included in this. Box. It is. Yeah. Uh, why? Why don't you? Oh. Talking about a groomer that's going to break in. Now you're going to heat the building to the groomer. Why don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I just um. Well, we just want like to like the next step, right? So, <laughs> like we when we took over the club, no, <laughs> um, we started um participating in the club, there was not a lot of funding yeah. um available. And we're so we're trying to grow and grow and grow and push the bank account, but we're only at like thirty thousand. And when if we we never know if the rumor breaks down, it could be yeah, yeah, yeah. thousands of dollars to fix it. So but this number doesn't affect the club. I mean, we're no, I know. We just didn't check, right? really. Well, right. I mean, you guys want to put in it. Hey, <laughs> I mean, I know, I know. 15, 20 grand for heat. Yes, I don't know. Probably. But to retrofit that, it's going to be more. Depends on what the heat is. I mean, the decision you need to make now is are you putting, you know, radiant in, right? Because right. otherwise, you can make the decision later. But that's going to be tough. Radiant's going to be tough with two. Massive doors are going to open. Right. right. Yeah. Would you need no, heat in there if you just had electricity to plug in? To, well, to, I would to, also know that we're in zero degree weather. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure that our mechanics guys would love heat. It brings up another issue like we have the town garage. So, when you bring in all the snowy stuff and then you heat up the building, you get all this moisture up in the air. Yeah. Uh, we had to retrofit the town garage with uh, some kind of air exchange. Okay, no, I just, I hey, I'm just thinking, I'd love to see it. I just think it breaks the middle water down the oh, road. Like, I think you wind up in a space in a situation. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is there a drain going in the, like, sure. yeah. is there like a drain going in the middle of the floor? We were just talking about snow melting. I just didn't know where the snow was melting to. So you would like to, but a drain in a floor uh, causes a whole nother piece that has to happen. You, uh, because you're melting off snow equipment that has fuels in it, it would have to go into uh, whatever it's called. Again, think of it power plug. The water separator we have. Yes, yeah, the same thing, right? So it triggers a lot, and this number can easily climb and climb and climb. So you have to be careful how far you commit. Uh, like yeah, yeah. heat it, okay, it okay. pulls in, it doesn't really melt off. Okay. It stays snowy, but you can clean it up before you pull it in. So there's minimal snow. Uh, so the groomer, right? So when we come off the trail, I, ideally, when they were pulling through, we don't—they're not carrying any snow in the groomer um, anymore, or in the plow. Um, and I mean, we at the other shed, we—that's what we do with our snowmobiles, and it just stays frozen. Unfortunately, it just stays cold, and we brush it off, and we hope to not have to really—we try not to go out in a snowstorm anyway, like where you're picking up a ton of snow. Um, it's not really it's ideal or safe for other groomers to be out in it, but um, so, so you can I didn't ask for heat. <laughs> we, can function, we can function without heat, it's for sure. I mean, the, the guy working on the groomer is gonna have to put a space heater in under there, probably to do some of the work, yeah. um, to even get bolts to move or whatever, depending on. Not even go into mechanics of things. <laughs> so we'll have it's like a forte. They will have electricity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And electric heater that would melt stuff off. I mean, ideally, you know. We put a hot dog heater in the maintenance bill to the airport after the fact. It's not used for regular heat, but it allows it relatively efficient propane heat when you need to get in there and fix something. Right. So that's something that can be considered down the road without having the huge implications of heating constantly and getting back on and safe. Major fixes we can call it um to get or however no we don't get so yes sorry depending on the type of heat you can there are types of heat that require a cost of water source right so for example, if you did a radiant floor heat, then you, you got that water. Oh, geez, you need water. Oh, geez, you need a subject. Any further questions? Uh, my only question is how do you feel as a town manager that the relationship 
between the club and the town will be effective. Do you think there'll be any long-term um, problems with a, a vol? Now we have responsible volunteers here, but that's not always going to be the case. And so the, you know, there's going to be a change of. Um, so how do you feel about that as the town manager, owner of the building? So it's my job to adapt to change. Okay. Uh, no, you're not going to have that level of consistency, but there will always be language in that lease agreement that allows us to avoid okay. it with cost. So the lease agreement will be your um, trying to be you'll be able to regulate what goes. On. So if the town owns the building and leases it, even if it's for a nominal fee, and, and I think it should be for a, a club that's going to put in the volunteer hours and maybe the trip. That's the whole point. Does who executes the say this gets approved, the selectman approve it, it goes forward? Who does the hire? Who does the buying? Who does the hiring? Who does the directing, the building, the sign off? Wouldn't that be all the town function? It's on your on your the town's yeah. property. Therefore, by default, the town's but so the town would do everything and lease out operation, if you will, to. I'm just well, I want to understand it now so yeah. that I'm not questioning so it's, it's a lot in my mind it would operate a lot like our state grants do where we have meetings with Portland we define the need we file we the town files the application we the town pays the bills saves the invoices file for report put them in that so yes, it's administration on our time, but that's the way they get seen through. That's the way the agency will be able to what it to be. Um, and I really, really, really don't like it. if we were, if it gets approved, putting you know writing a check and then asking for the monthly reports and things like that. Uh, uh, only somebody that's absolutely crazy to get to that. It's just it's just a lot of data not finding up on this and we track that. Now, how does the state enter into this also? The state will not enter into this program here. Okay. This is, but, a, this is the town block. Does the state, state own the, the rail trail, right? That's correct. So the state will, the way it is now is the state will pay the town for the club to groom the friend, which then the town turns the money over to the club. And that's how that kind of goes. ATV will be a little bit different because we'll have calcium and things like that. And there'll be the volunteer pool, and it may require some public works to be clear in there. You just never know the situation of the maintenance. So the town will pay for we pay for our calcium free. Yeah. And that's a state program. Uh-huh. And then we'll pay for that, and then the money goes back to us from the state, and the 10% comes from the sports and volunteer hours. Um, I have a question. We keep talking about like security for like all of these projects, the cameras and stuff, is that something that we should just attach to this building or is that coming through like, is there an idea of how to cover all that yep. in the future? So the goal is to have that included in this project. Okay. They're gonna come in on the budget, right? <laughs> and then we're gonna be able to put that in there as a part of this project. It's gonna make sense for everybody that's involved. And then I've already talked to the parks committee last week because this is in the park. And they are going to have an aggressive budget for next year because they're adding wireless to Usula Park next week. And then there's surveillance cameras coming behind that. There's going to be wireless down at the port of potties expense. All those things are things that we have to consider. Okay. Um, so if they want to help with that, they're great. But, you know, it's a nonprofit organization with little means and not a bad volunteer base, but anybody that. And we will help. I mean, um, I know that we had committed as a club sort of not with a vote, but to help get electricity to the building, to help fund, to help volunteer, to help whatever. Um, we do have a pretty good group of people and they do lots of different things. So um, we do have a volunteer base to kind of cut this budget. I just didn't want to come in with some super low with a bunch of volunteer hours and not be able to meet that. So the 137.5, I looked at multiple times with a few different people to come up with a number. Um, 
and I added a 10 percent contingency on what we came up with just in case. Um, the building itself is around fifty thousand dollars. Definitely. And then we've got to get garage doors and man doors. Um, but do you have an itemized uh, thing that you could have handed I do into not. the? Uh, I mean, I have the, the layout of the building. Um, it's pretty itemized, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But I mean, uh, monetarily, uh, I don't the whole thing. No. Either. But at a high level, we're talking about groundwork, concrete. Mm -hmm. Cost of a steel building plus erection, which includes doors and etc. Mm -hmm. Will it include no electricity? Yeah. Electric entrance, not at the moment, not mm -hmm. um, automatic. So you're, you're asking? So you come on the budget, like Rich would say. Well, right. I mean, um, like I said, we the club is fundraising all the time. Um, we're working on a huge fundraiser with the shed right now, and that's probably one of our biggest. Um, recently, and so we are trying to allocate money to these kinds of projects. Obviously, one hundred and thirty-seven five will take us. It'll just I don't, I don't think we want to donate no a lot of money towards a town owned structure. Right, right, right. Volunteer hours, different thing, maybe. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. not, we want to donate money, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to put a lot of money into. It. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think what we bring to the table is the volunteer hours, the grooming. I mean, you can't cross country ski on the trail if it's not groomed. You can't really snowmobile wheel the trail safely if it's not groomed. Um, you can't really walk it. Great. If we get a foot of snow, you're not walking on the rail trail until it's groomed and packed down, um, which means really no access um, from the rail trail to any of our businesses or even even crossing the rail bridge, you know, to try to get across, it would be hard without it being groomed. So, so um, would, we, would we need to add to the project for the electricity then? Because we said it, the building would have electricity. I have included a little bit of a, like a $5,000 buffer in there for it. Um, and then the Sportsman Association can help with some as well. So I tried to bring it by Richard. We didn't add any more to it, but or I didn't. Okay. I'm going to leave you all done. I shall. Thank you so much for your energy and your enthusiasm and your dedication to making the town a better place. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to hear a motion. I have a motion to approve the request for $137,500 to this building. I'll second that motion. Second. Uh, discussion. <laughs> I think we've discussed quite a bit. Does anybody have anyone last? Any member have anyone last thing that they'd like to add before we have a vote? Group, you all set. It That's, just seems like an awful lot of money. It's a building. lot of money. It, and uh, but can you address this for a second? Mm -hmm. You want to address sure. this? Yeah. So uh, I'd like you all to, before we have our vote, it really brings up a really good point. The TIF committee is given approximately about $140,000 a year. Um, and over the years, these this is the oh, go ahead. I'm stealing your thunder. No, I mean, that, that's that's your job. <laughs> uh, did you hear that? Uh, anyway, uh, the, this is how our money has been allocated, um, uh, since our inception in 2014. Uh, the fire department's biggest chunk is when we donated 200 pounds. I think it's 200. Yeah, I think it's about 200. When they were just finishing up the construction of the fire department. Um, the facade, obviously, is the next biggest. I don't know how many facade improvements we have, but the the um, uh, robot is far more nice. Yes. Um, um, so, and then downtown uh, economic development, which is a 65,000. And then a little bit here and there. I think a big part of it too is that being the cost is that having a rail trail is a huge thing, I think, to have it from one end to the other. So to do that and want that to work successfully, we need to help them to groom it. And if they don't have a place to hold it, keep spending money to bring it back and forth, then that truck breaks down and then they're in a whole other space. So I think like Richard had said, it's really important to be on board with helping to I keep it up to par because if it's not up to par, then people will skip our piece and go somewhere else to park. 
I can see the feasibility of the whole thing, but I just, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a lot and it's a lot of space in a park that was given to the town for kind of conservation type purposes and for people to really appreciate what's there. And so I think that whole thing will detract from it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, this whole thing is going to detract from that attraction. Um, I think you could see the other side of it, though, because like they so like people, can. Yeah. people go, I think, like, I've lived here for five years, and I've never known that the park existed. So uh -huh. hopefully with the parking right there for the ride trail, People like they take a break at a parking and ride and they go down and look at the trees. So I think you hand in hand get more traffic to, to the park. And, and with her improvements as well, if you get the school involved, there's a place for them to park. And I think you guys said it's off to the side of the parking area as well. You know, on opposite sides of the parking area, basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I definitely. And it's within the pine, so I know I was just thinking that. I wonder if there was room for it there without mm -hmm. cutting out any more of the pines that yeah. are there. And we can make adjustments to We can go and really like mark out the site. We didn't want to go in there and like put guns I, on. So that state, would but. be a good thing. I feel like before I would approve anything, I would actually want to see. <laughs> we well, so. The only thing I'll say is at this point, our building will be delivered at the mid to end of November. If we wait for another meeting, we will, it'll be next year because we won't be able to pour concrete. We've got, you know what I mean? We've got to have a plan um, and get the building here and up. I mean, again, we're asking people to build a steel building in December will be a treat. And the final say will fall to the, the town, basically. Right. Right. Wrote, uh, Richard is the project manager on uh, he would ultimately uh, decide on placement. Right. Actually, the planning board will. You're right. right. You've so got a so we, and yes, and again, yeah. remember, we are an yeah. advisory uh, committee to the select. So this is not the end of this. Yeah. This is only that we are advising the select people. So, uh, thank you. So, more discussion? Uh, all in favor of 137.5, is that what it was? 137.5? All opposed? We have, uh, one. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, um, visitors, both visiting. Both. Thank you very much for all your commitment to our town. We appreciate it. Um, number four, continued business. Update on the mural project for Henry Town Square. Um, and it's my project and uh, um, we are um, full more ahead of being um, painted as we speak. It should be done by the middle of the end of the month uh, and then coded several times before it's installed. Um, the, erect, the structure that will be hanging on will be installed according to the contractor um, by the beginning of September. Um, there'll be two structures uh, and eventually there'll be three structures. There'll be the large mirror, which is eight by 16. Next to it, there will be a two by four points of interest. Um, and then on top of that, there will be a photo of the mural with all of these points of interest. So someone looking at the mural will be able to know where things are uh, in our town. Um, and then um, Richard's thought was, this is going to be like a 45 degree angle in Emory Square and facing the parking area for the ATVs and the snowmobile will be another um, a four by eight, we'll call it a mural, um, facing the parking lot. that will probably say something like, welcome to Norwich Walk. Turn around and look at this. Uh, What's that? Welcome to Norwich Walk. Walk around and look at the other And they're probably, we're talking about having the sunset. It's a beautiful picture, like similar to one of that one with the sunset. Where, where was he got from? But anyway, uh, it could it, that won't happen right away. Um, and then underneath will all be cleared out, and it will have just this ball, just mums, and then the high school um, with um, I don't know what the horticultural club is going to be planting all indigenous 
plants next year. They're going to be growing them themselves under Dr. Um, Ann Dorney's direction. So that's where we are. So hopefully by the middle of September, um, you'll be able to see something. The only thing I had was that extra panel that he was talking about. The way that it's going to kind of be situated, it's going to be targeting Main Street. So when you're coming down the rail trail, you're going to be looking at the back of the sign right, for part of it. So we thought we could angle that off and have something that's connected but disconnected from the rest of the um, What about elevation? We're going to go about two feet. The bottom of it would be two feet. About two feet. So, so if I'm standing there, I can literally touch it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. This is not a billboard. No. No, eight feet up there. No, 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 two feet. Uh, the objective there is for people to take selfies. Right. And uh, that's what we want. That because that's what social media will just, you know, once you see that, well, wow, wow, that perhaps you need a small platform. Well, that's something we talked about, but that's piece of granite. I know. <laughs> 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 Number square is Johnson, right downtown, right across the street. Park. Well, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we, there are now boulders around it. Well, that's my mistake. I will say it's my mistake. And now knowing what that we have all this old granite, which is wicked cool looking, um, we'll, we may end up swapping out a few boulders for some granite, which will also serve as seating, beautiful square seating. It just happens, and maybe a kiosk to talk about eventually. So that's the miracle. <laughs> Any other old business that people would like to talk about? I would, I would, um, so moved. There we go. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you.